Well, welcome to the third episode of the Liberate RVA Counts series in which we uh, talk about anything and everything on anarchy, volunteerism, agorism, peaceful parenting, uh, and of course, any, uh, I guess, suggestive topics uh, you would like for us to kind of look or gloss over a bit. Um, so with that, I guess we'll start off with the uh, first topic we have here on the list, uh, intellectual property. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, there seems to be, uh, have you guys seen the uh, sluts of Instagram website? Mm-mm. Yeah. All right. Uh, so you've heard of Instagram, right? Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So somebody bought the website sluts of Instagram and the person who owns the website got a cease and desist letter threatening like we will sue the hell out of you if you do not uh, turn down your website, do not uh, propel any kind of traffic or anything like that because we own Instagram. You're, like Apparently they are in the alphabet, those arrangements of patterns of letters and no one else can have that. But he was saying that this was like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. It's Instagram. That sounds pretty cool. What's, what kind of game is that? Uh, this is the, the story of Sluts of, like a Danish name with asterisks over the O, mm-hmm. um, of Instagram. Uh, Instagram oh, okay. is the name of the island. I think I did see that little meme floating around right? the internet. Yeah. Uh, Making fun of that. Yeah. And the, the name chain. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sluts of is the name of a, a, a goose, a geese or something, yeah. a bird. And uh, Instagram, of Instagram is the name of the island. Uh, and there's also, um, I guess, uh, alligator the whore or something like that. And different weird spellings of it. And use your... It's kind of like a, a way of bypassing the you know, strict laws around IP right, right, right. names. So. so I thought that was pretty funny. Because uh, Instagram really went all the way out to send a cease and desist letter for daring to use those arrangements of the alphabet. Yeah. Uh, we own it. It's ours now. Uh, we have that government guns to back uh, this idea. Um, so that's really what uh, intellectual property is when we talk about that. Uh, patterns. It's not real property in, in regards to um, property rights. Uh, I think a lot of people who advocate for capitalism, advocate for property rights, uh, forget the, that what we're trying to do is um, prevent, I guess, dis- conflict disputes over scarcity of resources. Um, and some people will say the, and there's no scarce resources in the, in patterns, um, like in the amount of, uh, arrangements of letters you can have in the alphabet or, um, or, or music notes. Yeah. Or music notes. Yeah. Um, so, but people will like to think that that has something to do, well, like when we talk about when we're against IP, they like to say, well, you're also then against businesses, you're against music, you're against yeah. uh, creativity and innovations. Like, no, actually a lot of uh, the stuff to host that back would be intellectual property rights. Um, yeah, I'd be totally screwed as a musician if I didn't have like YouTube.com and SoundCloud.com, right? like these kind of resources where I can go to get, you know, some inspiration and, and some new, uh, like... I'm on like a drum and bass binge now for some reason. Like I was never really big into like techno or house or, or drum and bass or any of those kind of really like fully dependent electronic digital kind of sounds types of music. I, I always liked to keep some instrumentals in there, some Rangel. But um, yeah, like it's I would have never been opened up to that otherwise without those resources. So I, and I, now I'm gonna start incorporating it into some of the music that I create and see how it goes. And that's just how I, I enjoy that freedom. And when you were practicing, you would like mimic the patterns that other people have created, right? I mean, I don't. It wouldn't be, yeah, it wouldn't be exact, but it would be heavily influenced. Sure. I mean, like while you're yeah. learning, yeah, while you're and, learning, right? And, the, and my medium, right? To, like too, the, the, in which I need, like the things, the type of instruments that I use to create my sounds, and mm-hmm. digital uh, recording, multi-track recording. So yeah, it's it's great. Like uh, with drawing for me, when I was a kid, I you start off with tracing and then you know mimicking those patterns and then. Mm-hmm creating your own uh, after that. Um, I guess, what about, I guess, in fashion and stuff like that? Oh, well, fashion's the easy way to talk about how there is no definite intellectual property. The, I guess the aspect of my life where it really comes into contention is um, the adult industry. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, well, recently a friend of mine had to send a, had to, did, opted to, after much um, contention from another party, send a cease and desist order to a person who was taking their videos, you know, they would initially buy one and then put it on their site and put it up for distribution. Mm -hmm. So essentially sell their work again and again and again and again as if it was their own. So if we want to look at theft 
as a form of aggression, you know, when you draw the line with, you know, the lack of intellectual property and the actual existence of taking somebody else's work and redistributing it as your own. I mean, you can look at sharing. I mean, we all, myself included, watch pirated content. And, you know, the person who's sharing it with me, they don't profit from me. And I don't, in turn, profit from it at the end. But, uh, yeah, there are definitely some instances out there where um, people take work they did not create, claim it as their own, and charge for it. So. Uh, yeah, and I think that will go along the lines of, um, I mean, you'll still have rules against plagiarism. Like, uh, you'll still have, like, uh, people want to go to higher forms of education, and the rules are like, look, you just don't plagiarize. You can use all this material. We're not against copying. I mean, there's no one's pointed at you for copying, but um, to excel, I guess, the standards here, uh, we can't accept plagiarism. So you can have that voluntary and acceptance. And my advice to them was to brand better. You know, that's right. how you kept cattle from being rustled. To brand right. them, you know, and this person has a well-established reputation. They're, you know, respected in the field. What they make and the fact that they make it makes it worth something, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, but, uh, yeah, that was what came up lately in my life in terms of um, intellectual property. Because the person was also using comic book characters that didn't belong to them. So they, in the, they in and of themselves, were sinning against intellectual property while they were persecuting this guy. Who uh, right. then said, well, I'm going to go to DC Comics and all that. I'm like, okay. Right. <laughs> you go ahead and poke the badger and bring us all down. All right. Or poke the lie or however you want to say it. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's something that's got to be wrestled with, you know, like, where do you not stand in the way of progress, and where do you actually just, you know, go out of your way to be lazy? And, well, know, people know the difference people. between a knockoff bag and, and the real thing. Some people know that they have, like, the pirated copies that we watch always has, like, the guy who walks up, stands up in the movie theater seat, and the noise is not that crystal clear. Um, well... Maybe Tyler can speak to this. It sounds like an inequality problem, right? Like, if there are, if there's that many people out there that are willing to, like, listen to my low, like, crappy version of whatever song I wanted to try to recreate with the, with the instruments or whatever materials that I had, um, then we should be looking to solve that problem as to why so many people want to pirate in the first place, right? Right. Why don't they have the wealth that, you know, that they can, you know, that they have, that they need to support, you know, other artists and, and expand the market of art, artistry, and music, and everything. Right. Well, I guess uh, the first thing we have to remember is that you don't own profit. Uh, I guess in terms of even as an artist, you may put ten hours into something or a hundred hours into something. Uh, I don't own the money in other people's pockets. I don't own customers. Um, I, you start talking. You sound sounding like the IRS <laughs> mm. uh, in that regards. Um, since things are always kind of competing with one another and innovating, at any time someone can say, hey, that's a cool idea, I think I could do it better. Uh, so you always have to be on edge, always innovating, always changing things up, mm -hmm. always changing your prices, always marketing. It's, uh, it's got to be a full-time job. Because um, the moment that you kind of start relaxing for a good length of time, someone will figure out how to, what your idea was, yeah. copy it and do it better than you. So and as, so I guess as long as you're, you're on your toes and kind of continue doing it, um, you still continue to have a good, fair market share, I guess, in that regard. So like, sounds like um, like the Monty Python. Uh, they noticed that on YouTube, there's a lot of shitty, grainy oh, videos. Yeah, that was great. They right? created their own YouTube channel. Yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, we'll release it all for free then, because they, they, they got tired of going after people uploading crappy versions of their, their shows. And they're getting all these uh, YouTube ads and stuff like that. It's like, okay, we're just going to really release the crisp, better version that we have, uh, the file that we have. Get the message out there. Get the right. material out there. And then if you want to like support us and you want to buy the material, then do so. And they ended up making a lot more money. A lot of money. I think yeah. they showed up like a like thousand percent. So. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> crazy, crazy. Right. Um, so, and they had to learn how to market better. Uh, I find this interesting areas, like we're talking like media uh, production. You look at uh, HBO... Uh, the Walking, not I don't know the Walking. Some TV shows were like release the videos, like South Park releases their on their website, knowing that if they don't do it soon enough, other people are going to pirate it and that's where they're going to go and try to watch. Oh, they're the going to lose. Ad, they're going to lose they're advertising. advertising. Money. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's why now it's done through Hulu and their own advertisements. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So they, they just rather control than not control, try to facilitate a better medium for which people are going to watch it anyways, like. Um, uh, the Avengers. All right, so a leaked trailer for The Avengers 2 came out. Uh, wasn't supposed to come out at all. 
uh, two hours later, Marvel made Marvel made uh, an announcement. Fuck it, it's like we're just going to release it our official version now instead of the leaked grainy version. They already have it. You can't uh, defeat it. The most you can do is uh, try to develop a marketing team against that. But the inevitable w- could Any occur. Any action like that makes me immediately suspicious. You know, because that's a tease right there. That's, yeah, it's, that's, that's good for them. I yeah. see. Like it's right. like it's stimulating interest. It's keeping interest like going for them for the uh, you know initial release so, of the movie. It could be. Could be just as well. Um, it's a marketing tactic, maybe. But uh, trailer leaks have been known to happen. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of huge guarded secrecy around uh, mobile devices and stuff like that because they want to. That's that's their marketing stuff. They, that's their bread and sugar and building up to that. Um, so even if it was a fake one, that's a pretty cool fake one, I guess, in that regards. But if it wasn't, and given them the benefit of a doubt, that's a pretty uh, fast acting decision. It's like, well, let's release the official version since it's already out there. Because um, I would imagine then you would want everyone to watch the trailer from you first, hmm. right? Uh, even though it's already out there. Um, instead of uh, some in the past have tried to go out there and try to shut down all these websites uh, and uh, trying to prevent these leaks from happening. I guess now they realize you can't really prevent it. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. And that also, I guess there's a lot of interesting studies to go out there with even private, pirated videos. There's like an increase of boost in sales of the video itself. Um, in terms of, uh, I guess it's not really piracy, it's just copying. Uh, backwards yeah but yeah it goes back down I guess to well there's the Monty Python video right. thing and there's also uh, the ostracization of the market when people do copy and cheat and steal I mean it's pretty widespread among music uh, especially like among DJs and um, so like Will I Am the, one of those singers of Black Eyed Peas got caught ripping off some music score from a, a Russian DJ and he got a lot of criticism and, and you know like blowback from that, and that's kind of you know really impacted his image as like an artist, and um, or at least for me anyway, like I would never support him again, probably knowing that he that's you know that he violated that. So um, yeah, so it's it's fairly strong among the music world. I mean, of not copying already, right? right? You don't need laws really much. To enforce that, yeah, it's kind of frowned upon make, on each yeah. other. Like you just in the adult world, it's an act of desperation because then you know nobody wants to share with you, nobody wants to work with you. Yeah. Like, oh, you're gonna turn around and steal from me at some point. So, you know. hmm. so I think an example of this would actually be uh, the My Dementia, where Joe Rogan was like, "Hey, you stole all these jokes you're telling." And you're, oh, right. Oh, wow. so, yeah. So he said, so "You yeah. copy instead of stole because you can't really steal." Um, that should got canceled. <laughs> it got canceled, really? Pro yeah. 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 Oh, wow. All right. So, um, even if he didn't steal anything, I guess there's always this kind of sense of like, you're not plagiarizing kind of rules in, in, in that regard. I guess kind of like in sports, don't, uh, you know, drug up. Like uh, lose, uh, like Armstrong, they had a rule. They're not saying, they're not against drugs, but they're saying in, in this particular era of field, um, you don't use drug usage, and it was found that he did, and they took back all his medals uh, in that regard. Um, so you could have rules with that, and I think there's a lot of normalized um, rules already set up against against that sort of stuff, but I don't think inherently uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, marketing better um, and making money off of that. I, I think it's, uh, again, it goes back to the belief that I guess people have like a, like an entitlement to customers or to clients to people, right? Um, because- well, that's that's kind of what's going on right now in like the Uber and tax versus taxi drivers, right? Right, right, so right, like, right. We think we have like this monopoly on this service, and then like really, pe- like people that are um, trying to find new jobs or trying to enter the market are finding this new resource to them and tech like the technology driven you know app based where you can just call up a taxi driver they they send you like a picture of him, of the person and like their ratings and and everything and it's like everything's done through your phone and it's just super convenient now what did it take uber to or lyft to come to that why couldn't uh, the taxi cabs get to that point themselves right i think they got too yeah. comfortable with that cartel yeah. monopoly, yeah. Uh, and so they lacked, uh, I guess, interest in innovation or change, and got a little too comfortable. Um, 
And I like, uh, I don't know which came first, Uber or Lyft, but then I'm pretty sure they're competing, especially, yeah. I guess, with one another. And For those that don't know, it's like a ride-sharing service that you can just basically order. Just like, uh, there's also Airbnb and stuff, like, on online where you can, like, share people's, like, places and houses. You can rent out, like, this house tonight. I'm going to be out of town. Post it on, you know, Airbnb. So it's it's, it's just this whole kind of new um, community forming on online, right. online-based uh, services, so... And just ride sharing is just one of them. I think I first came across it in uh, hearing about uh, something going on in New York City. People trying to find nice bathrooms, and so they like have like an not like an app, but like a search area to find a uh, a bathroom. Yeah, what, what would they need a bathroom for? Hmm. I don't know, right? <laughs> Late at night, right? Hmm. A cocaine fueled <laughs> alcohol binge. Why would I need a bathroom? All right. Anyway. Just so met that, this girl, right? <laughs> so I figure that um, what in terms of what intellectual property, it's not so much. I guess the actors, like we're not, I guess, against creativity or art. Um, they just have to continue find different ways to market that, and there's a lot of restrictions from those who use their own resources. Uh, like when you, if you write music, no one actually took your music book or your pencil that you wrote with it. You they probably just heard you playing it on the subway or on the train. Hey, I like the melody. I'm gonna go yeah. and copy it. Um, Nothing was stolen, not your guitar or your keyboards. Um, but some people like to think, well, you wrote a book, someone copied your book, that it, they're, they're stealing from you. Uh, but I heard somebody trying to make a, a suggestion saying, well, it's not that different from me going on your land and uh, taking your deer, because deers can reproduce uh, and so forth. Um, but that's, that's still scarce uh, to begin with. Uh, ideas are not, they're limitless. Uh, and because of that limitless capacity, there's no need, there's no conflict, because both people can kind of um, have the same uh, idea at the same time, mm -hmm. right? There's no... Uh, there's nothing limiting me from innovating on an idea over you. Right. And so it's just competitive driven at that point. Yeah. yeah. Well, here's one of the things um, I deal with a lot, especially at the Writing Center, is when you're talking about plagiarism, you're really talking about giving other people credit for their work or influenced by their work. So citations, I know people aren't taught that very well, but mm -hmm. learning how to cite everything in your environment, once you do produce a work, it's almost like you're listing your like influences. So actually having citations within your work can actually further legitimize yeah. it, um, and that will restore whatever you were hoping to preserve throughout intellectual property. Yeah, it open up, opens you up to new, you know, ways of accessing information. If you know who's influenced this person, I can then, you know, find who, like, what that, where that quote was, or where that, you know, where that data was, and I can go back and then use it for my own new creation or my new hypothesis or whatever I want to research. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you read a lot of scholarly articles, right? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So do you so, automatically go to the last page and check the work cited? Uh, no, no. I mean, not after like um, checking the quotes or whatever, I, whatever I think I would find useful out of the article. Um, but no, I've done that many times. Or just like just just being inquisitive, like, oh, what's that? What does that mean? And then just going up and looking up and finding. Yeah, I just think it's, right. it's very useful. It's comforting. It makes you think you're not taking notes all day. I'm aware of a lot of uh, academic uh, textbooks with have quotes or. References to like other oh, published school approved academic textbooks, uh, yeah. which then of course are not accurate or objective. They're still, um, and are very much propagandized. Um, so it's just hard to find objectivity in that field. Um, I think there's some good websites like the Mises uh, Institute has, uh, I guess, good credible objective research. Sometimes there's a little minarchism, but um, yeah, I think those are a lot more refreshing. Uh, but yeah, I, I find it difficult sometimes. All right. <laughs> um, so yeah, and, and that's, so that's you, you give credit where credit is due, and right. that's just what you should do. And you shouldn't be forced by any law to do that. Like, right. Just have the integrity to hold that up, and to know that one day, when somebody's reading your paper, that they can then go back and or it, it, same with music or whatever. Like I share all my music for free online, but I also. Like state like what software I use like it's usually free freeware mm -hmm. or like you know uh, what musicians I'm influenced by so right um, yeah and I still get downloads and, yeah. people, and, <laughs> and requests and requests for like like a guy in Spain right now is requesting me to send him some guitar samples so and I have no problem with doing that mm -hmm. 
if he gets rich off of my guitar samples, it was due to his like, you know, genius of like organizing it and composing it within another you know set of you know. So I have no real contribution to that, and I would just expect him to just like write my name there. Okay. Right. He just did that. <laughs> Thank you. Like I don't expect to make anything off of it other than right. helping his creativity. Uh, but movies are very much into that. Like they also do like uh, screenwriting in, in terms of, like uh, there's a certain percentage of the screenwriting thing is like maybe fifty percent of it is changed. You have to share credit or something like that, or sixty seventy percent is changed. Then it goes like the Natural Born Killers script, for example, was written by Quentin Tarantino, I believe. But since it was changed so much, uh, he he didn't uh, get his credit for it. But he was totally okay with it because it it was taken an entirely. Different it was the direction. Oliver North film. Oliver Stone. I Stone, Stone. Yeah, yeah. North. Oh, he's a politician. <laughs> Jeez, just as bad. I guess. <laughs> um, so that's intellectual property. I, I, that's it's definitely I I see it's still something new for a lot of people to look into. That's I see it as mostly like a anarchy three hundred level for a lot of people. I guess too. Yeah, it's it's fairly trivial trivial when you're just looking at like. The, all the abuses done large scale like right. right now like things we could be solving and we're sitting here arguing about IP it's, like, right. it's pretty <laughs> so most people don't like, actually know about IP either it is one of those 300 level business courses you do take right no I, I think it's, it's still part of it uh, I, I mean I think it's very much still the focus against uh, taxation theft all that it's very important but I think that also goes into a lot of areas where theft does occur in terms of like shelling out I mean, putting on like millions of dollars for your lawyers that could be uh, better spent into your employees, lowering prices in the uh, IP world. Mm. And I which, think in uh, a layman sense, people hear all the horror stories about intellectual property. Well, uh, yeah. Harsh, but the mm. stupid stories, like, you know, people who tried to copyright the phone book, you know, people, artists who thought, oh, because I sampled a Beatles lyric, I now own, you know, the body of their work, you know, stuff like that. Like, when it's hard, when people tried to sneak in with something, you know, once again, somebody tried to pull a move to be lazy and profitable, and then they're like, oh, intellectual property is there. Hmm. It, is a, good, it, it is a good excuse for people. Right? Into, yeah. Yeah. Well, the reason why the the, uh, the wrong Wright brothers uh, didn't continue to make new planes is that they got embroiled and suing everyone in the United States yeah. uh, for daring to create, create airplanes with their own plywoods uh, without giving them money because uh, the, one of the first phone calls was to their patent lawyers to beat the United States from doing it first. Um, so they got in broad They didn't really continue to make anything new. And they, it's not as if like the plane that they made was anything really new to begin with. It was built upon pre-existing works yeah. uh, that was majorly done like in Europe. So yeah, it had been done for like 20 years prior. Yeah, he, he figured been... like maybe one small little thing but not yeah. the whole entire thing. Uh, or he gets he credit could for say, it. Even back to like Da Vinci, really. But right. I don't know. Yeah. So the real horror story is to you know get credit for any idea when you defraud the government. Right. And, yeah. And a lot of people will say, well, who patented it first? Right. That's uh, who who rushed to the uh, government guns first. The is that that's why people even bother innovating is because it incentivizes people to patent things in the first place. Right. Yeah. I think it's uh, kind of lazy. And, and for me, I I was doing uh, photography. I haven't done much for, with it for a while, but. Uh, come across, I guess, the argument against IP was very refreshing and wasn't, uh, uh, it was like, very easy to adopt. I was like, all right, cool, that makes sense. Uh, I mean, and, and, gener and, and not so much that photographers don't really put out the entire file of their photos, just a small little version of it, a hint of it, and most people just have a gun. So if you want the whole thing, you know, order a copy and, you know, I'll sell it to you. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> or, yeah, watermark. Um, yeah. But if I, like, did the whole, like, if I spent so many resources in order to, like, hack your website and steal whatever original files. I don't, you don't then, keep the original files on the website. Well, I'm, I don't know. If somehow on my I computer? Decide, if yeah, I yeah. was, like, a super hacker genius and I figured out how to steal it. And, like, what about that case? Uh, uh, does, does the level of intricacy, like... I guess they're, like, aggressing against my invasion of, uh, not so much, like, privacy, but, like, my property of my computer... Uh, yeah, but I would then have to spend my own resources so much to like to go to the point to be able to right. duplicate your work or whatever. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's like work. Like, please, can you, uh, <laughs> can you, uh, I guess, de-engineer this and? Uh, yeah. Why not um, just make money? Right. <laughs> yeah, why not just make something else better? If you have newer. those skills, come yeah. on, right? <laughs> if you have it, yeah, exactly. I'm literally like make money, like more money. 
Right. <laughs> yeah, that too. I was watching this uh, these videos on like uh, how to build such and such. It's like how these things get made. It's like all the mechanics, like how to make a, a record, a recorder, uh, I guess an LP album. It's like a lot of machines, a lot of intricacy, and I guess you need machines to build those machines. Uh, so yeah, I'd put into reverse engineer any of this stuff. Um, not even glass. <laughs> I want to know how, how much heating. I guess that's what Google's for. Uh, that's why you hire people with those specialty fields and where the experience and uh, knowledge they picked up. It's not something that uh, just anyone can do. And most people try to make it seem that way. It's like, well, I don't think so. I don't think I don't know anyone who can reverse engineer that. Maybe her own, but hmm. uh, that's difficult. Right? But you still wouldn't have like the you facilities to, the, to, right. to create the materials, right? So during that time, so while your competitors yeah. then are uh, trying to understand this new product, uh, I'm trying to understand it. Uh, I have uh, maybe an amount of time in which uh, I have a, a market, large market share of, of this product that I just created, right? Of course. Um, but you probably don't see as many IP battles within, like, the industry, uh, I guess, the manufacturing sector itself, but more so within, like, the creative yeah. uh, sector, the creative class, like the I arts, music, um, literature, and yeah. so forth. So. I think uh, Apple has a pattern on uh, round corners for phones, um, and they always kind of go backwards with, like, I believe, like, Apple didn't even want to get involved with uh, IP at all to begin with until they were getting sued by other people who are, I guess, patenting some of their work. Yeah, so <laughs> and, it was an Ap Apple-Samsung b battle or something, right. yeah. Uh, so let's, let's bounce around with IP and going back, I guess, to stuff we're talking about, taxis and stuff like that. Uh, you guys seen the South Park Uber episode? It's called Handy Car. Yeah. No, that was great. <laughs> um, and uh, I guess in that regards, I think I like how South Park is... I always found South Park to be a good introduction to a lot of these weird topics sometimes. They're really uh, good at exposing contradictions in society and then totally like making a parody and making fun of it. Mimsy was my favorite character in that entire <laughs> episode. He doesn't have that many lines. So yeah, they basically like make fun of the taxi industry because it's like a dirty, like nasty yellow cab service with a mean, rude like driver that doesn't care about like customer service at all because right. they have a monopolized uh, transit system service. Um, yeah. That's been my experience with all the cabs. Uh, and then Timmy comes in on his little like electric scooter chair and makes handy car like. But it, I was I thought that was kind of weird how they fused in like the handicap thing I guess like political correctness like they tried yeah, to like not merge. Handicap now. Yeah. Well, handicap is now a slur against the differently or otherly abled. Oh, is that the new term? No, yes. I, don't, I don't think they're even. But the they're otherly able? But you, you, sir, are bodily able. Oh, so it's just you're other. making an think, ableist I don't, I don't, argument I don't think even by know. using handicap. I in like any that. I didn't know that they were trying to do. And that. I'm sorry, political correctness is continuing to evolve. I don't, I don't know if that's that's even uh, reached that. Who, who even? Yeah, says I know, that? right? It's crazy. Um, uh, so sorry that sounds, I, there, it sounds yeah. like it's a minority kind of talk, anyways. Like very. I don't really hear so many people even say that. But now you can see why there's more depth to making fun of it on South Park. I don't know. I think, uh... I think when I've heard terms like differently able to use, it's been to, like, bolster the confidence of children. You know, just that we just have to do things differently. Yeah. Right. Handicapped parking spaces are still called handicapped. You know, nobody's been towing that line too hard. Right. Uh, I think my contention would come with, like, forcing, um, again, businesses to be... Uh, wheelchair accessible uh, in that regards. Yeah. It's like, uh, look, it's, it's somebody's like, look at a look at a business as somebody's home, right? You're, you're walking to their kitchen. You're walking to their dining room. They're inviting you in. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm I gonna make a, I'll make a demand and for you to change their house, and may yeah. change their property. I had a friend who whose father owned a gas station like back in the '90s when they, you know, passed the disabled laws where every. Um, bathroom and ramp has to be you know wheelchair accessible so uh, he couldn't afford the modifications to the bathroom so he just ripped all of, like the the stall walls down so that like there was enough space to wheel in the car so basically you just had to take a shit like in the open oh yeah um right yeah and, and that uh <laughs> that's all not, he could do there's so. nothing wrong with, with petition hey you know i really appreciate it. you know i invest some of my money I really like your restaurant come here all the time you know and uh, unfunded mandates right yeah you know that's Kind of like uh, 
the bakeries in which they're the forcing the couple to sell to uh, LGTB folks uh, whether they want to or not. And that's kind of fucked up. We created a job! Look at us! All right. Yeah, yeah there, was, there was the cafe in Oregon, too, who didn't want to serve coffee to cops. They said, we don't want to serve your kind around here. Right. Gun-toting psychopaths. That I could get behind of. Yeah. That <laughs> was really cool. That was a cool video. All right. All right. But, the, but there was a lot of controversy around, like, whether, you know, private business owners should be able to do what they want with their business. Right. So, so. But you didn't build that. My, my favorite example is, uh, you didn't build that. I think it was um, <laughs> a donut shop. Um, and the Secret Service came in, and they did buy some. And I hope Barack Obama enjoyed them. Now because he, he did, they wanted to, like, it, it was a PR moment that went south hard. Very nice. Mm. What does Andrew have to say about this this whole thing? Andrew, <laughs> we haven't introduced our, our guest tonight. It's Andrew Jackson. He's here. the most valuable man on the face of the 20th. Stepping in for world. Bugatti Bayron. <laughs> tried to fight the Central Bank, but failed. All right. Well, he succeeded, and then it propped back up again. <laughs> and then put a in his face on one of them fiat yeah. currencies. They were like, look at this loser. <laughs> Came back harder than ever. <laughs> yeah, Got 20s are Hamiltonians. where it's at. All right. Um, so you guys, uh, what do you guys think of the Matthew McConaughey? He, he just... Showed me that. I don't yeah. think Rachel's seen the video yet. We'll have to, uh, some pretty, not a real one, though. No. <laughs> some pretty funny stuff. Yeah, so in the South Park episode, do you So does it sound yeah. like he's reading porn then? No, it's, that, just, my... it's just like I was saying. It's just like, uh, so it's Matthew McConaughey doing a Lincoln Mercury SUV commercial where he's like just driving and it's like this like really serene like nighttime drive down the highway and he's just really trying to be like very deep and poetic and his like, language oh there's a camera he's just caught me talking to myself for yeah. the past 10 minutes the thing is though it's, it's a silly. monologue on a car commercial car oh. commercials don't usually have monologues so whatever they were trying to do the people who wrote that commercial I'm glad you're exploring new things it didn't really work out for you there <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm sorry that Matthew McConaughey had a lot of, I guess, is surrounded by right, yes folks, monologue. yes friends, who just didn't say, like, no, man, that's, what are you doing? The monologues have to occur, like, after a bunch of cool things have already happened, right? No, oh, they, wow. have, they start theater, off only man. when you're uh, crouched on the edge of a rooftop building, is when monologues can't present themselves. Oh. Crouched I mean, over the edge of a <laughs> yeah. nuclear uh, that's I'm just I thinking know. of like TV series like The Wire, like at the end, or like uh, Game of Thrones, like at the end of every sh uh, show for each season, there's like this like slow moment where the like the music comes in to really like bring in the dramatic effects of like what happened to the season, really close out, right? Like montage. Yeah. Oh, am I thinking montage? Monologue. Montage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Jeez>. uh, <laughs> but yeah, that. Uh, so, you guys definitely have to see Interstellar. You guys definitely have to watch the movie Interstellar. Um, I won't spoil it because Matthew McConaughey's in it. We'll wait and see if we can get a Pandra involved because Pandra does a lot of really cool... As you were mentioning, really good uh, movie reviews, so I'd like for him to give his uh, take on it. But I thought that was pretty good. My old, one, not really a spoiler because you, you see in the first few minutes where they talk about like the plot and premise of the whole thing and what, what you watch the trailer for is that I guess Earth is... Uh, doesn't have enough resources, is about to die, there's a lot of problems, so a lot of people go into farming and they need to uh, find a way out, find another planet to uh, homestead and uh, transport the rest of humanity to. Mm. Uh, otherwise, the planet will die and there goes the species. Oh, and the wiki synopsis states the world is now stateless. It's not. It's just yeah, the it's federal government has been involved, but there is still a state government, there are still state schools, and there are still taxes. Right, that was fucked up. Yeah, yeah, so even Wikipedia page says, in a stateless society, no, it's not stateless. They even hear uh, Matthew McConaughey explicitly say, I pay taxes. Uh, I was like, that has nothing to do with stateless, so it's weird how they appropriate the words and try Damn, to Damn, I just donated things. money to Wikipedia too. Because <laughs> I was like, man, you know, I use this resource all the time and they're really great, and thank you, but. Yeah, right? What? Yeah. That's, really, That's really bad. That's <laughs> bad research tactics. Right? No, I don't use it for research, but like, if I don't know anything about a subject, it's great. Like, oh, okay. really super convenient to get like a quick background, and then I, if I, I'll explore it further. I like Mises, uh, uh, Wikipedia. Uh, <laughs> so that's, uh, I guess, and, and that, that was kind of weird, uh, what you're mentioning. And they're also mentioning like uh, lying to kids and that uh, there in actuality was no space age. Uh, 
and it was actually a, a trick the United States did on the public so as to uh, encourage Russia to keep spending their money on a space program so they can go bankrupt and as to kind of help uh, these children be adjusted into a world in which uh, not take risks, not take uh, explorer to costly explorative ventures. But, and so they, Literally stay on the tax farm. Yeah, stay on the tax farm, focus on the tax farm. Um, so that's kind of... But of course, they don't really dive, go much really deep into that. It's like, well, if you're going to say, well, this was an inefficient program, it was very costly, a lot of resources spent needlessly, well, you could take a look and just apply that to all government and, you know, let the, the capitalists and entrepreneurs solve these problems of uh, this world crisis of no food. Um, so essentially, everyone has to be a tax cattle forced to be on the tax farm a little tax farm yeah but let's go and go see it we can you know praise it and yeah yeah no yeah and so let's off. let's do i guess uh an escape pay for that sometime soon well that's it's a lot of fun well, the bird much longer. it seems like something they do to, to uh, tie this back in with intellectual property if we were to watch that movie now and show it for you guys here and we'll just give our own commentary that also would be breaking copyright that would be breaking copyright hard that would be a, like an FBI fine. And that's how a lot of things are protected by. Like it's that first like five seconds within whatever you're filming where the FBI thing pops up and then the, everything else shows. Yeah. Uh, and don't don't download it. They're looking for that. And, uh, go to Prime Wire is a good uh, website. Stream it. And there's no need to download it. I have a lot of friends who got, not a lot, uh, two, three friends who got caught and got a letter saying, aha, we caught you. Uh, you owe us money now. You're going to court. So, uh, you know, don't take those risks. But yeah, great movie. We should definitely catch up with that uh, and do a review together with Pancho. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, I guess in connection, jumping around here, uh, I guess with space and uh, Frozen, I guess they, they try to do this thing with, uh, um, what do they call it, uh, cryogenic freezing. I guess the opposite, going back to one of the topics you want to bring in was uh, heating. Uh, oh, just like, just home design and yeah, yeah. I find that interesting. Yeah, yeah. so we we took a course in sustainable energy and we looked at like um, best sustainable practices in home design and there was just like a lot of strange things that the way home builders make homes nowadays they'll often put like um, like heating or, or air conditioning units in attics mm -hmm. or outside or in the basement. Um, in uninsulated areas where they're very subject to the heat or the cold, right? So, uh, like in the summertime, if your um, your heat exchange pump or whatever is outside, beating in the beating sun in a very like ninety degree environment, it's, it has to work that much harder to cool the air that it's uh, the hot air that it's sucking out of the house and sending back into your to your home. And conversely, in the in the winter time, um, the same thing. So we were experiencing that in our in our apartment, where it was really like like, uh, and even worse, they put the heater ducts uh, at at ceiling level, so so they weren't. So I'm basically heating the the, the apartment above me more than I'm heating my own apartment because mm. as, as heat's rising, like their floors are getting really heated up, but like I'm getting nothing. But I'm so it's just uh just this this crazy way that people. Um, uh, design homes it's just it's retarded and uh, and really not uh, efficient at all so um, I, I would like to maybe enter that market and maybe try to change that so I think you're talking about uh, I guess styling uh, Tyler's car uh, oh yeah customizing the Uber right so um, one of the things I brought up earlier <laughs> um, was actually that we can find free market solutions to statist restrictions and I think that was one of the ways in which you were talking about designing houses, right? So they properly heat the houses. Yeah, yeah. People just wouldn't live in that condition. Um, and there's just so many different ways we can do that. And, like, people want to argue about, um, you know, capitalism being um, intermeshed with uh, political power. And that's why a lot of ANCOMs don't like anarcho-capitalists. But political power is completely different than economic power. And if we can really, uh, like, people talk about protesting a lot, right? Like, let's go out there and get our, our voice heard. Well, actually protesting within the free market of ideas and business solutions can actually shape governments more than protests. And that's something I really want to look into. So again, anarcho-capitalist solution to status problems. And there's just so many ways in which um, I think we can actually use our own innovation to make them obsolete. Mm -hmm. 
Chrissy can easily take one of your fixtures and put a ceiling fan in instead. She has like that. done it several times. You want to push that air back down. Just put your blades around so the air is being. Yeah, I was I was trying to um, adjust the blades tonight. Yeah, but um, no, that that'd be interesting. That like create like a shroud to to angle the air down. Basically, yeah. That, that's, that's so cartoon? the fa- the fan would be yeah. pushing hot air down. Yeah, hmm. essentially, but um. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think I think that'd be great. Um, if you got so. a bunk bed, that'd be cozy, right? It, but to to speak more about like us, you know, anarcho capitalists or just capitalist solutions to status problems, uh, at our local university here in Richmond, Virginia Commonwealth University, uh, in their newly designed engineering wing uh, of building, um, the one with the pyramid on top of it, if you know, uh, they had the option of of. Uh, making a contract with the company that basically installs like sensors and I believe they're uh, based on like carbon dioxide or something to to like uh, trace how many people are in the room and then it will like shut down that room's like uh, uh, heat or air conditioning so it's very like uh, real time hmm. um, monitoring of heating and cooling super efficient it would have been like you know a few million dollars for them because it's a big building to install it but it would have saved them that much in the first year mm-hmm. of operation, and they didn't sign the contract, and it was just like, wow, really? Like you could, you had that, and you'll you'll drive around all the time, or you'll like walk around BCU, and there will be lights left on, and and you know like all kind of just waste going on constantly as that university is growing and growing, uh, especially in the residential halls, and just it's right. just it's ridiculous. Well, they don't have to worry about it because they're they're not a private in the yeah. area to be exactly. as efficient or uh, have a I guess a real need for that. Um, yeah. But uh, say they went bankrupt, right? No more VCU. What do you think those buildings and structures would be repurposed for? I think VCU would be a mall. Man, yeah, yeah, it could be. Well, they already have the uh, ANCAP colors, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the gold and the black. Um, I just previous, it probably it'd, is a, it'd probably be office space. Actually, a lot of it would be. Yeah, that's converted. right in the heart of downtown. Or or residential. Um, so. Yeah, uh, I mean, you can kind of split off until I guess see what uh, schools will look like uh, with the end of a uh, public indoctrination, public, um, uh, sp- well, stolen money spent on this sort of stuff. Um, you bring up a good point though with repurposing. There's that. There's like a whole movement going on within suburbia now, where they're um, where, where they're finding ways to make uh, old abandoned malls or something, or old abandoned Kmart's and Walmart's that are that are just left there. They're called gray fields. And uh, repurposing them into like residential or like even sometimes multi-purpose communities, so they would have retail, residential, office space, everything all within like a cool little like dense urban development project within the suburbs, mm-hmm. where like it can be connected, you know, by bus line or people, you know, increasing walkability and density to make services more easily rendered. All right. Yeah. So. It's cool because it goes back into, uh, I guess, what would uh, Uber or, or Lyft uh, air services look like? Yeah. What do you think? What do you think, Tyler? Um, so I watched the Aeromobile uh, 3.0. That's that? And I, I posted that. It's the flying car. Um, I guess there's like the third prototype of it. And I saw it take off. And I saw it on YouTube. The government built that? No. <laughs> no. The government most certainly did not build that. But it was beautiful, and uh, the government will already did regulate it all. Mm-hmm. Um, UFOs are technically people who are just flying without the government's permission. Is UFOs unidentified flying objects? There we go. Yeah. So I mean, it's just how could we actually market that commercially to uh, individuals? I guess as uh, we already, uh, I guess one of the concerns was like you know it might be very complicated, but you know cars are complicated. You have like because like two TNT worths of uh, explosions that people are driving around with their cars, but, you know, houses are not being uh, blown up. Uh, there's none of that stuff really going on. Yeah, there's bad drivers, but you can blame that on the uh, monopoly roads, which is a bad system to begin with. Right? The murders of over 30,000 people, 35,000 people, I think, a year or two ago already. So, you know, those accidents, you can kind of blame on that instead. Even if you look at the logistics of air travel, most of it is kind of on autopilot. So if you think of who you're really communicating at the uh, airports and how you're coming in, a lot of that is already done by computers in the first place. Right. So the reason why you have a lot of those problems, I guess, at airports is because, again, that's only one airport. You can't have, like, private airports. Um, and it's expensive to dock your, your plane there or whatever. 
So again, the idea behind like a flying car is that you don't need to. You can just take it home with you or whatever. Like, I, there's so many possibilities, and uh, that's the thing when people say, "What about my roads?" It's just like, I, "What if you could fly?" Like, right? You know, yeah. <laughs> I don't really care about your roads anymore. I got myself a flying carpet. I got myself a rocket to your backpack. Like, let me know if I can pick you up off of your nearest. But if you don't have a road. Go get near one. Yeah, we could do like uh, the taxi uh, lift services would be, I think, what put it, we were saying, placing people in hammocks and kind of airlift them to work. Well, I think Uber would make an also, also like a really good example here of why um, making them like private would actually solve the problem of the roads because companies need to use the roads. I know as an Uber driver, I'm driving on the roads. And if I'm drawing some of my proceeds from um, the utility being there, or the infrastructure being laid, um, I still have a vested interest in that. So the roads need to be better so I don't jostle around my customers and make them think we're going to crash because you have a shitty road. Like, hey, yeah, we'll pay for the road. Like, we'll help you build successful roads. And um, I think that's one of the ways you could is like a Kickstarter for roads where, again, you don't need to pay taxes, but if you live near or use this certain road, you're going to care about it being fucked up. And we we don't really have that option right now. I like... uh... We have traffic engineers, but... um... If you've seen their department here in Richmond, it's like this old crappy little building over by the Diamond. It's like a, it's this horrible. And then like right across the street is like the ABC Distribution Center, which is like state of the art. Well, I mean it's it's just it's a lot more funded, right? Like to it's more profitable to uh, control how much alcohol consumption oh, yeah. Cal can have as opposed to like providing him a service of roads. Uh, it's fairly obvious, like right there, in that like distri- like inequality of of uh, prioritizing services and just how uh, monopolizing them has totally crippled um, efficiency. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was uh, I guess in terms of uh, transportation, I guess think about um, tailspin and uh, cloud cities. I was just thinking like, how would that uh, I guess conflict with like having a home here? Uh, in an area in which you've homesteaded, like you can privatize rivers, you can therefore privatize oceans, you can privatize uh, old land. What about uh, space, I guess, above your home? Um, or... Privatize oceans? Yeah. That sounds well, like things could get hairy. But... Well, yeah, you're, right. <laughs> you're, you're going to be seasteading out there. Right? You have to have an incentive for it. I mean that that would uh, it's the same thing that, that would definitely help fisheries. That would definitely help uh, a lot of animals. And as long as the privatization on land has uh, prevented a lot of them, from yeah, I guess from it, you really saw pirates uh, right? rise when you saw nations trying to colonize oceans. So right, that makes sense. Yeah, I guess you have you your, have a decrease in piracy. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. You have your floating cities, flotillas, like your water world cities. I don't have a time show on that. Uh, I guess. Yeah, because you wouldn't want like the passages to your water cities to be like compromised, like the safety and security of that. So that w- piracy wouldn't be dealt with pretty swiftly initially. Yeah. I would imagine. Right. Get <laughs> Tyler a repurposed aircraft carrier. Well, that's what drone right. strikes are for on the new Predator. You're welcome. Yeah. No, yeah. Courtesy of George W. Bush. Um, I think uh, some of the problems of piracy right now is that some of these ships are not allowed to have like machine guns on them. Uh, so oh. they can't they can't even arm like the cargo stars. ships yeah. Yeah, yeah if you're commercial you can't be on is, is that ridiculous yeah, so. I, was, I was watching the beginning of that movie what was it um, with Tom Hanks where he's like the captain and he gets oh yeah he's arrested by the Somali <laughs> pirates right I can't remember but it was it was pretty ridiculous they weren't using like uh, flare guns and stuff to like protect themselves against it was called these... Captain Phillips Captain Phillips <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank, thank you Tom. I mean it was just ridiculous I was like they didn't have I like one you watched Castaway while drunk or something right. <laughs> <laughs> but what if that's what happened once the Castaway got picked up oh no <laughs> sure not again he Get joined the drop. pirate crew <laughs> Wilson no um... you shot Wilson <laughs> <laughs> so that uh so that, that that that's why a lot of the stuff happens. They can't. They are the state disarms them. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're a cargo ship. You're a monstrosity in the ocean, and you don't have. Oh yeah, they had like water hoses and stuff. It's just like oh no, not water. Can, <laughs> so, where's um, your the the air force can actually move way faster than anyone on the water. So if you see people approaching you that look like pirates, you can actually call in airstrikes, and that's one of the ways where nice. you don't need to arm them, but they sh- they they should be like you, they, you sh- they should be allowed to. Well, that's a right you well, should well, have. Well, think think about it. It's a lot cheaper to spend those bullets 
than it is to spend those uh, hundreds of thousands for those ICBM weapons, for those missiles, uh, Predator drones. Um, oh, no, those would be privatized, too. Like, that's what the security forces would do. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. they're saying, like, just, just call it in. Yeah. But I, I would say that you already have a, a group of people providing the security and just kind of... And then when the market doesn't have pirates, you wouldn't need that service. Right. What about sea monsters? Ooh. What would you, how would you do with that? The giant squid, or the kraken, right. or Godzilla. I guess uh, the Japanese will leave way with that. The colossal with, uh, squid has much interest in a you know, metal vessel. Mm-hmm. Don't kill endangered species. <laughs> they're what? not endangered, they're just sneaky. What do we call them? Uh, a, a, a gaiju? What about a, a gaijin from, uh, in Japan, those big sea monsters? How do we, That's uh, another myth, yeah. How do we uh, defend against that? Because uh, they the movie... fly, right? I believe how it should have ended. Said we go down there and wait for them to emerge. Right, just cut off their heads. <laughs> I, don't know, I, I would be pretty like happy if I could just call in a nuclear strike on Godzilla. Oh my god! It was threatening my fishing industry. Get this fucking guy out of here now! Didn't he arise because of yeah. nuclear? Power? <laughs> 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 Ten times bigger. I don't care. Well, I never understood. No, I say let them. You need to go home and talk to your wife. <laughs> yeah, you surely have missed the lesson. Here. She would have <laughs> real solu- She would have real solutions, I'm sure. All right. Well, you create those uh, giant ass uh, robot people, and they go out there and find them. Mm. Right. I don't even think yeah. you need them. Like the thing I never understood about Godzilla is he store. He's still like a biological being, right? Like, so we just need to move his mass around. Which would happen through explosives. No, like we you just could need blow to, Godzilla up. We need to create a, a predator bigger than him to go that eats Godzillas. They did that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, and it was a nice little like Gamera, wrestling Mothra, in the city. Mechazilla. <laughs> I literally bothered to watch this crap. It's it's like the power <laughs> girls this movie. were bullets. And I just want to have an opportunity to say, let them fight. What if that's how, for some reason, it does not work. <laughs> what if that's how dinosaurs were actually created and they ended up wiping out humans and then they came back and they're just like... Oh, shit. <laughs> it's like a Matthew McConaughey commercial. Oh, my yeah. God. What a dinosaur. Really deep. <laughs> Wiped us out first. Profound. <laughs> and there were those moments <laughs> where you were like, who cares about dinosaurs? Dinosaurs built the pyramids. And then you were looking at them in the eye. Right. Well, so many dinosaurs, you know died out because they thought they had the you know, intellectual property cornered on their certain niche in society. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest and the toothiest, they're like, oh yeah, I, I've cornered the market on being toothy. Oh wait, there's no more need to be toothy? Shit. Yeah. <laughs> silly dinosaurs. Yeah. No, I think that's kind of silly. This is before the asteroid. This is just like, oh, I'm, I'm over-armored. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, for alien species to invade the United States, like, or always invade the United States. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, there they are, those Americans. Um, they never come here and just want to smoke weed with us. Like, hey, we heard you guys had the one dead uh, marijuana one in the movie. galaxy, yeah, bro. That movie with that little... <laughs> there is one movie in which an alien guy does come down to Earth oh, really? to smoke weed and everything. It's based on the guys from uh, Shaun of the Dead. Oh. It's called Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Our, our, I'm glad we have a film critic here. <laughs> that was a good movie. But Seth Rogen. Most, uh, most of the aliens, though, when they come in here, like to take over a resource. Like, look, there's a lot of planets out there. That made sense, like, in the beginning when we thought, like, there wasn't a lot of planets. Maybe Earth is, uh, like, a rare thing. But finding, like, there's uh, billions of suns out there, I guess, especially red stars. Therefore, there's, like, billions more planets, and many of them could be hospitable. A lot of them with, uh, water a lot of them with uh like there's a huge glob of water floating in space so it's like it's none of those movies kind oh, yeah, of make it's sense. like serious or something like yeah. white dwarf planet it's like well there's, there's really no other reason to come here to earth unless they're like curious uh i guess i'm gonna pull pranks or i just want i hope we're on a reality pranks. tv show that'd be awesome oh yeah uh so yeah i, I don't think because i'm thinking about making like the next independence day movie uh there's been i guess an increase of recent uh I guess alien attacking Earth movies. Um, but I don't think, it, if anything, it would probably be like that one movie where you rarely got to see a, mo- uh, a monster. It like takes place in Mexico, and they're just you know, reproducing, just doing their crazy animal thing they do. Well, Crack.com brought up the whole you know fascination with alien um, abductions and alien invasions was sort of you know an uppance has come type thing. So of course it would be very popular in you know. Uh, a nation like the U.S., where we're all about, you know, peacekeeping missions and colonialism, and, you know, we're gonna come in and do what's best for you, which just so happens to wipe a bunch of you out. So, you know, like, yeah, concepts like the screwfly effect and all, like, you know, 
some higher power knowing what's best for you leading to your death, you know, we deep down know that we're kind of being held responsible for a lot of actions like that. But that's, <laughs> that's the status solution, though, is to, mm -hmm. like, is to displace as many number of people in order to uh, stabilize whatever services. Well, I guess they're saying that we're here to improve the tax farm uh, because sometimes they like to connect it with, like you're saying, like uh, colonialism or like in South America, but a lot of people forget that in South America they had their own tax farms, they had their own uh, political ruler. Uh, it wasn't so different from the European model, except the European model was a little bit more advanced. And so you're just kind of replacing one political ruler to the next. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm not buying the pre-existing yeah, yeah, utopia, yeah. I'm just saying, you know, that the benevolent benefactor so far doesn't come through, you know, violent means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to um, interject a quick uh, thank you to Cal Moliné for ho hosting these uh, talks and giving us the anarchist uh, safe space to, to talk about these things without uh, ridicule or uh, <laughs> any sort of trolling. And uh, I hope people that are listening find it news just as useful. And uh, we welcome you to, and, uh, to come on the show and introduce your expertise areas and your topics and things that you want to talk about, too. So. Yeah. yeah, this is definitely welcome for uh, any Richmonders. Yeah. Uh, and for me, like, yeah, this is uh, great. I guess I was just talking to... Uh, and this was a free-range moose behind you here. It lived a full and verdant life in Alaska. <laughs> and was killed in hand-to-hand -hand combat by... Um, All of us um, with, with our own spears. <laughs> yeah. It was our initiation. Uh, Every part of the buffalo. <laughs> into this cult. Um, right. no, I'm just kidding. I uh, slipped out a struggler of my own <laughs> we, all, we all ate a piece of its heart. All right, we did the ritual. It was great. Uh, <laughs> <We're not laughs> what is a uh, Joloff or Joltron? <laughs> Zoltan. 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 Yeah, Zoltan. Yeah, I forgot how they did it. <laughs> yeah. like, Dude's wearing my car. Dude, where's my car? Yeah. All right. I know that movie, Tyler. I guess, uh, I guess the last topic I guess want to introduce here before we wrap up uh, would be uh, cannabis. That's a big thing that came up uh, recently. And crumbs, crumbs. Legal crumbs. in the nation's capital. Oh, yeah. And Mordor, right? Right and dirty in the nation's capital. <laughs> mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, does, does that apply to, to operating motor vehicles? Right. I don't um, think so. I think it's just possession if you're walking around. Right. I mean, there's people think that, uh, well, you have to do it legislatively. No, not at all. There's a lot of laws in which people already ignore uh, a lot of silly laws out there. Uh, like there's laws like you can't type an alligator to a fire hydrant. Uh, <laughs> I guess there's ones like you can't rob a bank with a water gun. I mean, they're going to ignore a robbing bank to begin with, but a lot of silly, like there is a anti-sodomy law here in Virginia. Yeah. Right? Uh, or no, like you have to, you have to have sex in the missionary position. Right, as yeah. Well. In, the, <laughs> like in the military, they also have that as well. In the military, it has to be only missionary, apparently, or something to that. No effect. doggy style for you. <laughs> and so, um, th so there's a lot of laws that people already ignore. They're still in the books that you don't need to go through an acknowledgement of the legislation of political ambitions and political parties and political rulers to kind of uh, make it disappear. Uh, there's a pushing pieces of papers around doesn't uh, make the cages disappear. Um, in terms of like, uh, we talked about it earlier uh, in the last thing in which you're, you're really just trading one cage for another, right? So like uh, me getting caught with pot, uh, I don't, I go into a cage, I'm, if it's legalized, I don't go into a cage, but of course if I don't uh, I'll still obey the new rules in which I can smoke it, the new regulations in which I were to sell it, um, the new taxes to come with, with it, I will still be thrown into a cage. Well, and, and the whole prohibitionist argument, like, at what point does outlawing it actually, like, uh, contribute to its usage? Right, yeah. Um, now that you've made it, like, ten times stronger by outlawing it because people uh, before could have gotten lower doses, um, now it's much stronger because people want it to make the supply last. And so that's what you're saying with, like, heroin and stuff. Yeah, it's getting uh, stronger and stronger every day. So, so the question is whether or not that was actually good for the market. If making drugs were illegal, actually made better drugs as a result. And I would disagree with that. But either way, they're much stronger now, just so you can get um, less of them in um, more concealed places, um, and then distribute. Right. I think it's benefited from being a status symbol, and so definitely alcohol went in that direction as well. You know, right. 
bring it out and show your friends. And the champagne. Yeah. Yeah. Look at my offshore portfolio, look at my handgun, and look at my stash of marijuana. All right. I'm truly a person of, you know, connections and roots. And of culture. <laughs> Uh, no, is, is this always kind of when people kind of bring that up? Sometimes it's uh, that's my longest argument with it. I guess the uh, seventy-five years is not a measure of success. But um, the, I, I, where I was trying to go with it was like that our willingness to want to control everything actually ends up backfiring on us. Right. So the opposite um, of that would be uh, uh, like uh, Super Bowl commercials in which you can't have fun without uh, cigarettes, drinking, and now taking a hit. Uh, so it goes. Back right now on those who don't want to see cannabis, and I suppose many people don't want to see, uh, I guess, alcohol or whatever uh, legal drug is out there. Now it has to be in their face, it has to be on billboards, it has to be where they uh, are moving around and about. Um, now it's in your face. Um, they don't have the freedom to separate, to disassociate from those influences mm -hmm. if they wanted to or not. Uh, so now it's the reverse of it, um, since everything's a public space. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think it, it definitely is still not a win-win solution. Uh, if anything, it was, it'll trick many, our younger generations into thinking, well, there we go, here's our change. It was a out. realization that it's too fucking expensive to keep criminalizing marijuana. Right. And like, well, DC's already fucking broke, well, so we might as well stop, like, wasting our resources on this because, shit, we can't even protect, like, the capital anymore. Right. We can't even provide basic services. and So uh, I think they were just... Desperate. I don't think anybody voted for anything. It was just like, okay, this is what we let you have. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you still have to argue that the state was operating from a economic framework, and again, uh, the broken window, fa the broken window fallacy would be that actually making drugs illegal uh, creates more jobs than dr making drugs legal ever uh -huh. would. So by locking people up, by putting people in cages, by building the cages, we actually do more to strengthen the economy than um, the mm -hmm. drug itself could ever. Uh, produced for the GDP. The Keynesian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Broken Although, window uh, fallacy. Fake jobs have still never been uh, created to begin with. Because um, those people sitting in cages all day for the rest of their life, they could have been being productive and they're not. No, the ones who are being productive now, I guess, in the But you're also the, making. The jailers, sheriffs. Yeah. Yeah, the prison You're making builders. people productive by, like, by. Uh, Caging them, yeah. yeah. But what the are they really producing, staff. right? What are they There's really no producing? There's, there's nothing that they produce, only so, but uh, death, terror, and uh, horror. Um, that's the only thing that state produces. So, yeah. By a small margin, you know, there's state option to go into service, or um, it it keeps people in low-paying jobs. You know, like you set yeah. minimum wage, and they can't get hired for anything. You know, above minimum wage with a criminal record. You know, so it's that sort of condemnation as well. But that's yeah. that's more a reflection of the direction the t overall global economy has gone as, and and to service and uh, knowledge based economies. So it's not, at least here in this country in America, that's pretty much all you have. There's no manufacturing. There's no, there's not much wholesale or like uh, retail. I mean, I guess retail would be a close, but like uh, services. So meds and eds. A lot of cities are going towards meds and eds, kind mm -hmm. of um, subsidizing those areas and creating those jobs in those in those industries or those sectors. Um, but uh, yeah, it's really just an overall like uh, decrease in the amount of options that the uh, the entrepreneur has to to then go into to free himself from 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 slavery from right. economic slavery. So. And uh, like when we talk about capitalism earlier, it's like yeah, we're restricted a lot. In terms of uh, what we can, uh, I guess, create with capital, what we can share and trade with capital, um, and these capitalistic ventures, uh, very much restricted. So Uber, yeah, <laughs> and Lyft, and Lyft, <laughs> and car flying companies, and uh, hopefully uh, the next Silk Road power. out there. <laughs> yeah, Silk Road. I would even right. argue. Innovation without just creating. Right, like I, I sell widget myself online, and recently I had to cool. lower the price in order to maintain uh, competitiveness. Um, so that's not a something I guess I kind of look down at or at all. It's just something you naturally have to do mm. in order to be marketable and uh, profitable. Um, and that's just I guess uh, a reward, really. I guess in terms of profit, I guess what is a Russell Brand wants to say is a dirty word, uh, profit. Uh, wow. Yeah, he was mad. He was he was ranting on international television. 
and he has gained a lot of profit uh, from yeah. that position, like millions of dollars worth. So it's kind of funny, like that Noam Chomsky guy. Th this brings us back up to anonymous. Uh, remember, remember the fifth of November. Uh, in America, we don't give a fuck. Yeah, that's just a UK tradition, right? Yeah, uh, and it's funny because a lot of people want to connotate that with uh, anarchists in, in a way like uh, blowing things up. Um, those are status in denial, um, advocation of force, advocation of that kind of violence. Um, I guess because I, I think uh, even the guy who did want to blow up that up also wanted to install his own theocracy. Was that yeah, the? It was a coup. Yeah. yeah, it was a Catholic coup against the uh, Protestant. Uh, I, I think they're probably oh, something like that. All right. Um, yeah. History. Yeah, nothing changes. Just uh, trying to do a quick reboot of the Matrix. Nothing. Fighting for the the ring of state power. All right. Over and over again. So <laughs> so it turns out the only reason um, Guy Guy Fox masks were reproduced in the beginning was so people could burn them in effigy as like sacrament to the state. Like, be thankful we still have Parliament. Guy Fox didn't have his way. Yeah, it's their Fourth of July thing. Like you know. We have gunpowder to celebrate the fact that we're not using gunpowder to blow up Parliament. You know, like here it's like, oh, we have fireworks to celebrate all the gunpowder we're not using to bomb people, you know. So, yeah, it kind of, it's a parallel to, you know, Noah and the rainbow and all that. Like, you know, oh, our good intentions that we could use these for peaceful means ignore the fact that we haven't got that far yet. Yeah. And, uh, no, I think that's a great uh, point to wrap up. Uh, so with that, thank you guys for joining for the discussion. This is a great episode. I look forward to recording the next one uh, next weekend. Uh, oh yeah, we also have anarcho-capitalism day, so that'll be. Uh, I guess we'll talk about that in the next episode. Um, cool. This was fun, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Of Take course. It easy.